Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we need to talk about resting membrane potential. Now, what is it all about? Well, there's some tissues in our body that we call excitable tissues. Now, these excitable tissues, just like me, have all this built up energy. They need to do something with it. Now, these tissues include muscle tissue and nervous tissue. What do muscle tissues do? They contract. What do nervous tissues do? They send these electrical impulses. Now, the resting membrane potential is a charge difference that sits from the inside of the cell compared to the outside of the cell and it's waiting to be excited so that it can do its activity. For muscles, that activity is to contract. For neurons, it's to send a signal. So think excitable tissues. They're going to be exactly the same between muscles and neurons, the concept of resting membrane potential. Now, when we have a cell of the body, remember, there's a phospholipid bilayer. There's this fatty layer that separates out the internal environment from the external environment. And remember, it doesn't let through anything that's large or charged. Ions, which include positively or negatively charged atoms or elements, that includes sodium, includes potassium, magnesium, chloride, calcium, phosphate, they're all different types of ions. They're not large because they're only the size of an atom, very small, but they are charged, which means they cannot freely pass through the membranes of a cell. So that's an important point. Next point is this, you'll probably find that if you were to have a look at all the sodium of the body, that most of it sits outside of the cell. You can see it here, most of the sodium outside the cell. And if you look at the potassium, you'll see that most of it sits inside the cell. So we've got this chemical gradient, all the sodium or most of the sodium out, most of the potassium in. And the reason why this is present is because of something called a sodium potassium ATPase pump. What this pump specifically does is it takes three sodium, chucks it outside, takes two potassium, chucks it inside. Now I want you to think about what this may mean to the overall charge difference between the outside of the cell and the inside of the cell. Before this began, before this pump happened, there's actually an even charge. It means if I added up all the positive ions outside and the negative ions outside, and then compare them to the positive ions inside and the negative ions inside, the charge difference across the two would be zero. Okay? There's actually zero charge difference. However, once we pump out three positive sodium and pump in two positive potassium, we're actually throwing more positive things outside than we are inside, which means we have a slightly greater positive charge outside compared to inside, which means we have a slightly negative charge inside compared to outside. And this negative charge difference is around about negative five millivolts. That's the charge difference just from the sodium potassium ATPase pump. That means we have this slight negative charge on the inside of our excitable tissues compared to the outside of our excitable tissues. But this isn't the full story. We've only got a negative five difference charge from inside to outside. We actually need for excitable tissues around about negative 70. Negative 70 needs to be the charge difference. So that means we need more positive stuff to go outside. And what happens is potassium has a couple of channels. Now these channels are like little doorways through the cell and usually the door is closed. But for muscle cells and neurons, it's actually leaky. The door is cracked open a little bit, it's a jar. And that means some potassium can sneakily diffuse outside of the cell, taking its positive charge with it, which makes it further negative inside the cell. It becomes even more negative inside the cell compared to outside the cell. And what we end up having is a charge difference of around about negative 70 millivolts. Now this is important because now what we've established is an electrical gradient from outside to in, and a chemical gradient from outside to in, and this is termed the electrical chemical gradient. Now this, what we now have, is a potential for change. The potential is that we can change the charge, so there's a potential there for charge to change, and the potential is for the concentration to change. In actual fact, if we change the concentration of positive things inside and out, it's gonna affect the charge, and this is called the resting membrane potential. At rest, the membrane potential is negative 70 millivolts inside the cell compared to outside the cell. If this was a neuron, all I'd need to do is stimulate this cell and positive sodiums would rush in, making it positive inside, I've just stimulated it. If it was a muscle cell, well what we'd need is some other positive ions to come in such as calcium and the muscle cell would contract. So this is the importance of understanding the resting membrane potential.